content needs to be you. What is your story? What do you care about? Who would you like to attract? Literally build out your perfect client. What do they look like? They're probably a lot like you, right? What interests do you have? What's your niche? Find that and then give that to them. It does not need to be real estate. You were mentioning the, the paint and sip thing yesterday, right? You literally could go into an open house, right? Work a deal with the agent and do a live video of you painting in the house. If painting is your thing, there are other people who like painting, right? There is, a, as a great example, there is an agent that is in my parents' market in Virginia, probably the one they called, and <laughs> <laughs> he was a former executive chef. He literally goes and cooks meals and like does videos, nice videos, of him cooking in different homes in the area, either his listings, his brokerage's listings. He literally goes and cooks and does these live videos of him making different things in those kitchens. And the whole time he's sitting there like, oh man, this kitchen's really spacious, I got all this stuff. And he's doing his little sales pitch. He has millions of followers. People love watching him cook and he has built his niche around cooking. So there are so many ways that you can build your niche, but it cannot be listing, 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 listing. Hey, I'm doing an open house. Hey, I got a showing. Hey, I got another. It's not going to work. No one cares, right? So the key is there's a balance that needs to happen. You need to show you. You need to build content for your niche. And that could be multiple niches, right? That could be on Instagram. You have a younger audience. So if you're on both platforms, my content that I would push out on Facebook is not necessarily the content that I'm going to push out to Instagram, knowing that Instagram is going to skew heavily under 35. So I may push our home partners program, which is a rental program, out on Instagram more so than I would on Facebook. Right? So understand your audience, and you can have multiple niches because, again, my first post of the day might be about the Redskins. My second post of the day might be about the Rays. My third, like whatever it is, right? But now the guy who cared about the Redskins post isn't going to care about that second post. But I don't care because I'm reaching a different audience, right? Someone else will. And that's the key. So don't get caught up in every post has got to be an open house or a listing or real estate because you don't consume that way, right? As a consumer, you're not going to, man, I sure hope I see someone selling me something today. Like, that's not what you do, right? So create content like you consume it. Yep. Back to the 5% of the followers that you mentioned, does that include close friends and the people that you're following? Yes. So if they're engaging heavily with it, right, those people will typically see it. But overall, when you do a generic post, under 5% are actually going to see that pop up in their new seat. Just because they follow you does not mean they're going to see it. They have got to constantly engage, which is why this concept of giving them content that you know they care about is important, right? Because otherwise, they're not going to see it. Now, if you know that your audience is full of 25 to 45-year-old moms, and you're constantly giving content, and it could be you like, oh my God, I need this wine because my kids are crazy. Like, that, like, if you know your audience will engage in that, put that out. Because when they engage with that, right, and now you do that every day, then on Friday, you do post about your open house, you're actually going to see it. If they didn't engage all week, they're not seeing anything, right? So it's important. The engagement is super important from an organic perspective.